So personally, I don't like to use filters because I think I look good as is. I'm worried that if I start using these filters, I'm no longer going to be confident in my own skin. Yeah. I'm no longer going to think that my face is decent enough or can pass. امبارح اي واز اون انستغرام سكرولينج ومين جاي على دبي يا وليد؟ مين جاي؟ اندرو تيت اهلا وسهلا اي ثينك از كومينج اكتوبر 15 يعني باي ذا تايم بيبل يعني بروبلي بيبل ويل بي واتشينج اوريدي طلع ليت اس نو ان ذا كومنتس شو حكي شو صار بهالسيشن بس كان بدي اشوف اذا انت حتروح او لا وات ار يور ايدياز يعني يو سنت ات تو مي وانا كنت بعتها لاذر بانش اوف فريندز بس لك اي مايت بي ان لبنان يو مايت بي ان لبنان بفتره ورك ريليتد بس وود يو جو لو Can, like again, the guy, the guy is interesting. I'd be interested to hear what he has to say. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean I agree with what he says, but mm. I'd I'd be interested to go. Well, on the other side, the an event, NBA event, be Abu Dhabi. Can I have to go to Lebanon for a few days? By the way, <laughs> it's happening simultaneously. Yeah, it's happening. Hello, October, November, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, I'm not going to be October, November, 15th, and 16th. But we're here today. نحكي بالحاضر كمان نحكي بالحاضر انا ديف اهلا وسهلا فقبل ما تفوت بالديف بليز جايز ريمبر تو لايك لا ما تستسلم ذا جايز ار دوينج بيتر اي ثينك اي هوب باي ذا تايم وي ريتش ذس ايبسود ار دوينج بيتر لايك اند سبسكرايب ات وود ريلي مين ا لوت تو اس يعني اليوم عنا ديف اي ريلي لوك اب تو هير فروم هاو شي ليفت هير فول تايم جوب اند توك ا هيوج ريسك تو انتربرينور شيب اند ذن بيلدينج ا كوميونيتي where she really spreads positivity whether it's physical wellness and which translates also to mental wellness for Tracy thank you كثير لكونك معنا اليوم انا كثير كثير مبسوط بوجودك انا وتريسي كنا جيران كنت ب- I want to highlight this <laughs> <laughs> بس هلا لا كل واحد صار محل uh, اهلا وسهلا تريسي كيفك I'm good انت كيف الحمد لله I'm doing great so Tracy I'm sure يعني many of the people that are watching they know Tracy is a huge influencer. Tracy is a certified calisthenics and mobility instructor. Uh, but who is Tracy on a more personal level? Is she this outgoing person? Is she an introvert? Uh, is she happy today with what she has? Who's Tracy? Wow. <laughs> It is How a broad question. How much time do you have? I have? We have all the time. Ahla wa sahla. Who is Tracy? Okay, I'll pinpoint characteristics, I would mm. say. Um, I'm, I want to say I like mm. to be Hello. home, but I also like a very good party. So that it's either or. I mm. don't like the place in the middle, you know, a good dinner, a good lounge, a good party, or just be home. I'm not a, very much of a socialite per se. Um, I uh, work hard. I'm... I'm uh, very much into uh, my tight circle, my husband. It's so weird to say that because it's still there for me. <laughs> Alf Mabrook. Thank you. Uh, my husband, <clears throat> my good friends, family. Um, yeah, pretty much. Ahla wa sahla bi Tracy. For Tracy, uh, of course, you, you told us a bit about yourself. Is Tracy happy today with what has been accomplished? And does she feel anything, is anything missing? Look, uh, it would be very, it would be a lie to say, I don't think things are missing. As long as you are ambitious and you have hopes and dreams and goals, you always think that something's missing. If mm. it weren't, then I would think everything I did is good enough and that's it. I don't need to try anymore. So, of course, I always hope and opt for like better and better. Um, but as long as I look back and think to myself, where was I? Am I doing a bit better? And if I feel stagnant, then I get upset. If I realize I'm not stagnant, there's progress from where I was just months ago, then I'm okay. Let's keep cruising. Mm. But it takes a lot of effort to think this way mm. because it's <clears throat> so difficult. Like I have to remind myself, Tracy, remember, count your blessings, remember where you are, remember where you were. And sometimes you don't go in an upward trajectory as much as you want to. Your trajectory is kind of like stagnant, up, down a little bit, st- stagnant. So I have to, it takes getting used to mm. it. 
that yeah exactly what you mentioned it's so difficult to make yourself think like this and no hal bad oqad tahass bitsa a halik and no you go through some times where you're really pushing let's say you're trying to achieve a certain result ma'am taqdar to to achieve it tiqsa halik btuli you start blaming yourself and i think there's a lot of people that do that ana kamen you know ano how how do you do you manage this uh, i do blame myself a lot of times bas aktariyat al waqt ma ha la no it is my fault i i know that i would have procrastinated it's easy to point fingers it's easy to compare it's easy to say why her and not me why him and not me how did he reach this far and i'm still here but if you really really dive in and this is what i look into a lot when i dive in i realize but this person had put hours of work behind the scenes before he got to where he is or she got to where she is mm. and it may not show on instagram or wherever we all look for for comparison but i wasn't putting those hours there maybe i was putting it elsewhere so why am i comparing and every time i kind of slap myself on the face to say do your job exactly you know put your head down Let's do your pushing. job keep keep pushing no i completely agree and i feel like it's a marathon and not a sprint and sometimes okay. you need those small steps that <coughs> take a lot of time in the making and in the building so as she was mentioning and i feel like sometimes uh we directly jump to the end result but there's like a huge road that you have to pass by yeah. order to reach this end result but actually i think instagram is the worst place to compare uh, yani you said the <laughs> wherever people compare it's them insta is literally ma is the shit but it's all fake mm-hmm. but social media in general i think as well no but i see, i would say other platforms i know highlight more difficult moments a bit more than others مثلا تيك توك بتشوف كم قصص انه والله بتزعل يعني انستغرام انا اصلا انا بحكي عن حالي انا مش بحط شيء على انستا انه زعلان بحط شيء على انستا انه شيء ما منيح صار معي اي ثينك اتس ا باد بليس تو كومبير يور سيلف از يو سيد اي دونت نو اف اي اي يوز تو اجري وذ ذات ان ذا سنس وير انستغرام واز اونلي اباوت شوينج ذا بيست اند ذا موست بيوتيفول ماست بوت بت اي جست ثينك بيبل غوت بورد اند No one cares about that anymore. No one wants to see your super jolly day all day long. People want authenticity. Yes. And خلاص, at some point, the audience is no longer interested in your picture perfect. They're more interested in showing me something that is more real and more attainable and more relevant to me. So that is why when you see people going up on um, body positivity, girls who used to edit their photos are now showing their stretch marks. Um, people who were talking about their picture perfect are not saying but look now this is how i edit my photo i'm actually using a filter more people are being more upfront about it because they realize this is what the audience wants and when they hear this the audience gets very close to you, to mm. the influencer like okay finally i can relate to you so it, you could you still get what you're talking about when you're on instagram where a lot of people still do the picture perfect and mm. it's true it's fake in a lot of ways it's not real in a lot of ways but you can still find some reality there yes there is what you don't what you will not find on instagram the <laughs> the thing not to do is to use instagram as a tool to compare your goals and your progress to someone else's mm. that 100% is a painful thing to do it's irrelevant how what other people are doing on instagram because i could be showing an end result of something that may not even be as as like i could show my app i may have five subscribers on my app mm. but i can make it seem like oh my god my app is great i have thousands of subscribers exactly. people can do this so as long as people are aware that social media is not necessarily always real then you know it kind of makes you feel like okay maybe i'm not doing that bad you know totally la i feel like uh, that's 100% true there's always like two sides of the story and yeah? like i think social media is a double edged sword you know you can like uh, depict what you want to depict from the social media platform but uh, other than social media chasey i want to take you back to your childhood i want to ask how was it in general and if there were like any interests or hobbies you used to pursue in your childhood um well i grew up in the us not very long. I mm-hmm. left when I was like 5 or 6 years old in uh, Denver, Colorado. So a lot of my I have like pockets of memories there, not mm. much, but I feel like it kind of built a foundation for me of how I am as a person, very active. I was always doing um like when when there's PE mm. in school, I'm always doing the softball instead of dance class or whatever, you know. So I'm always picking like a very sportive thing. Me and my girlfriends were like two, three of them. 
uh, Karen and Dana actually both know them. We were talking oh, about okay. them earlier. We were all together in school, so it was always Karen, me, and Dana in those sports, and everybody <laughs> else was doing something else. Yeah. Um, I grew up around my family. I mean, very easygoing childhood. I'm, alhamdulillah, I can't say that there was very difficult mm-hmm. moments, but just like anyone, ups and downs as, yeah. te- as a teenager. And um, speaking of your family, how was your relationship with them growing up? Were they supportive of everything that you wanted to do? Were they like protective? Did they show you like tough love? How was it like with them growing up? Um, with the parents, especially, and how, you, you had, did you have a close relationship with your yeah. parents while yeah. growing up? Look, I always had a cr- close relationship with my parents. Mm. I think in my older years, that when when I started understanding about growth mindset more about who I want to be about my shortcomings I felt like maybe my parents did the best they could but they could have done differently to guide me better when I was lost as an example um, I wanted to be an interior decorator I always said I wanted to do interior decoration uh, decorating and at some point I said, you know what, I'm not going to do it because I just found out that it's four years and I, I don't want to graduate in four years. I want to mm. graduate in three with my friends. Mm. My mom's like, okay. <laughs> now, in hindsight, I would have really hoped that maybe she set more boundaries. Like, no, there's no okay. This is what you want to do. And kind of do guide me through my goals and my ambitions. I don't feel like they they were aware. And like a lot of parents in that generation, it wasn't in them or to be like, okay, I'm going to guide her through her ambitions maybe let her test her talents more oh you want to do dance great you want to quit great you want to do this great it was kind of more like that Mm. um and i didn't have a i didn't have a joy for learning when i was Mm. younger i actually hated studying i hated learning it was like a punishment for (laughs) me and i feel it was the association of how it was taught in school and Mm. the way they do it the way they make you learn wasn't interesting for me it was almost like as if it, yeah. was, it was really torture. It was torture. Yeah. But now I read all the time. I'm always up to date with different things. I want to be well rounded in everything. Things that I never cared about before. I want to know everything about now because the version of learning today for me is almost like a, a gift. I mean, I get to learn this. Before it's like, Allah, someone's going to test me right now. And if I get an F, my mom is going to kick my ass. And I don't know what to do. And as if yeah. the concept of studying versus learning you know what i mean that's that's how i mm. felt comparison yeah well, uh, first and foremost come in but to congratulate you on your marriage this summer i'm sure this is a crucial stage and like a level up in your career um how are you feeling about this uh, new step new uh, uh people ask me how is it that you're married and i always say it's exactly the same and thank god because if it was different and i was surprised i'd be very disappointed. <laughs> so thank god no surprises there <laughs> Um, it's it's exactly the same. But does the title feel different? When I say it out loud, it feels different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when yeah. I say husband, Going it just back feels to my husband. Eh, it feels a bit like old, <laughs> like, you know. But uh, we're like we all grew up now. But uh, I mean, we, while and I had jokes aside, we always talk about the how fun it will be when we go the, through the journey of life, whether mm. it's kids, whether it's ups and downs, and that, as long as you have a like the support of a friend right there with you. We, co- we constantly say that. It's so funny how we're friends growing up, gr- growing old together. Like, okay, shit's going to happen. But you know what? We're, we're together. I don't know yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. We can do it together. It's, it, that's more of the attitude we have. So it's, it's quite fun. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, you need to have this, this good foundation, you know, uh, when you're in a relationship and to be excited to explore the different phases of life together. Mm-hmm. But moving back to the first phase, how, how did you meet Wael? And uh, how was it? Because, you know, many people, uh, they worry a lot about finding the right person. Uh, h- how did you first meet Wael? How did it evolve? Yani, was it love at first sight? Or no? La, or shifto marra jad baat kam shahar hikito. Yeah. You said something that many people <coughs> worry about finding the wrong the right person i would actually sorry many people worry about not finding the right person i would actually worry much more of ending up with the wrong person so if you just remember that you might end up with the wrong person forever so take it easy you might as well be alone ending up with the wrong person is painful 
And then, okay, if the right person comes, that's great. But as long as you're dodging bullets and you're not ending up with the wrong person, then you're okay. Um, with regards to Wael, I mean, I've known him forever. I mean, since I was 10 years old. Uh, oh, we have that human Yeah, zone. forever. But <coughs> we never dated. We weren't, mm. we were friends, but we were not close as, as kids. He lived in Saudi. We had a common friend who moved from Dubai to, uh, from Saudi to uh, Lebanon, and he was in my class. So every summer and every Christmas break, Wael used to come from Saudi to visit with his family. We used to be like, oh, hi, that's the guy from Saudi. You know, oh. what? So you were Can't not close, friend. Yani. No, but we were friendly when, friendly. He, when he'd come yeah. in summers, when he'd come and, mm. oh my God, you're back. You know, <laughs> he grew up, now he has one hair on his mustache. And I was yeah. like, it was one of those. Um, and I dated uh, late in my teenage years. He had girlfriends. And then we ended up being single at some point. <clears throat> like... I was 30 or something. Mm. Uh, we, were, we were single at the same time. And I just so happened to go to Lebanon for Christmas break. And I saw him there. He was living there. I'm like, how's it going? What's going on? And he had broken up. I had broken up. So we hung out all the time, like all the time, all the time, all the time. So we became very, very close here. So he was from a friend to acquaintance, mm. a guy that like I would see a little bit to becoming really good friends. And then fast forward like a couple of years and we ended up, Okay, well, when you were in your teenage years, did you ever think of him that way? Um, look, he was always the cute guy. <laughs> um, uh, my friends and I always say, even my best friend Karen said it in her <laughs> braided, uh, made of her speech, her <clears throat> bridesmaid speech. She's like, Wild was always the cute guy. And yeah. like everybody was like, who's this cute guy? <laughs> but nothing happened with any of my friends or Wael. And uh, we were just like, oh, but this guy is cute. Mm. He's sweet. He's active. He's, uh, you know, he's athletic. And he, it was very cool to be you know, yeah. this yeah. crazy guy that jumps from like a three story building into a pool. Like that's the kind of guy he was. Um, but he had a crush on me from my understanding. Uh -huh. <laughs> from your understand, I want to hear his side. I want to get to well. He's not here to uh, defend himself. <laughs> Khalas, we'll take your word for it. It's interesting. Like, I mean, imagine Walid, like in Tahalla, you're like 25. Or you are friends with a girl or for like seven years of soap since you were 18 you're friends with her and then you reach 30 and maybe this well, girl that you are friends with right now you end up with so yeah. it's applicable on each and every situation it's surreal, it's surreal. It's surreal. It's surreal. Yeah. It's surreal. So. and even when we did hook up at the beginning we never thought it would be serious mm. you know it was probably we felt like okay you know you know mm. okay, mm. it'll happen by accident uh, maybe yeah. exactly. well, you don't know you, know, you never yeah. assume that someone you've known for so long is going to be the guy that you're going to marry you probably thought it happened by accident or okay we like each other but it's not that serious and then it just got so serious so naturally that it didn't feel unnatural anymore it was not which is the best way to have it was the best way to have it and the best part for me is the difference between being with someone who used to be a friend of yours i'm not saying that's the answer but yeah, it yeah. just so happened that i was completely myself my ugliest and my best and my worst in front of him all the time and i never cared you never have to put up you know, a persona, you know, when you want to, when you first start dating somebody, you kind of feel, okay, I want to show my best self. Mm. And I'm like, whatever, you know, I don't need to fix myself. I don't care. He knows what I look like. He knows me from when I was a kid. He knew my family forever. And then all of a sudden I'm so comfortable and natural around him all the time. And then I fall in love with him and then we mm. end up together. So Perfect. I think this, it's, 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 for a girl, Janet, many guys, and of my friends, when it's too comfortable, natural, authentic, you know, أحلى بكتير من من fakeness, تصبيت الحال وهذا. يعني بس بس yeah, I don't know why why هيك بعد وقت there's over effort of fakeness. I know I don't think it's necessary. حتى من الشباب ما أقول بنات بعد وقت. It's lack of confidence. And lack I, of and confidence. I've been that girl. I was that girl. <coughs> I remember dating my first boyfriend. I was 20 or so, 19, and I remember he was a few years older than me. He was like 24. And I was thinking, like 19 and 24 is a big deal mm. at that age. It's not like 30 and 34, right? Like, so mm. you feel like a kid versus a man. And I wanted to always show like I'm very adult Oof. and I feel confident and I feel, and I'm putting on a persona and I'm not really myself without really knowing until you're older mm -hmm. and you're like, hide on that girl. Like, why <laughs> yeah. did she have to do that? It's unnecessary. I agree. So, yeah, I think uh, just you will go through phases. I mean, if a girl feels this way at the beginning, she may change and she will. When you're older, you become much more confident. Mm. Yeah. Tr Tracy, you went also through, yeah, alhamdulillah, Allah, you're in an amazing relationship. Again, alf mabruk, all umr, all I mean, uh, both of you have a very happy life. Uh, but kinte, 
in a relationship of five years and you broke up at 27. Mm-hmm. لو ف many people هلا بلاقيهم صاحبين وديتينج وبهالعمر تقريبا وبحسهم توكسيك لبعض بس بيضلوا سوا يعني ما بعرف ليه بركي اللي عند بيخافوا ما يلاقوا حدا تاني يعني اول شيء انه هاو ديد يو هاندل ات هاو ديد ات هابن افتر ذا بريك اب هاو ديد يو باونس باك لان اي نو يعني جوينج ثرو ا بريك اب از سمثينج فيري تيربل سبيشلي ا لونج ريليشن شيب اي واز ون اوف فور سيفن ييرز يعني ف اي نو ذا فيلينج بس انه هاو واز ذا فيلينج يعني عرفتي ات 27 سبيشلي بيبل ذات ار ناو ديتينج انه كيف فيهم يطلعوا من هالشغله So I was in back-to-back relationships. I had the first relationship four years, the second relationship five years. That fifth, the five-year relationship, you know, they were literally back-to-back. So all of my 20s-ish, 18, 19, 20, I was back-to-back relationship. I didn't know what it was like to be single. Oof. So having, and I thought, funnily enough, I was going to be the girl that had these two boyfriends. This one is the one I'm marrying and that's it. Like I assumed this is my path and we had a great relationship, but so at some point near the end, it just didn't feel right. We were not really in, we weren't meshing properly. Mm. He made the call. He's the one that called it out and kind of said, I don't know, this is not for me. So I'm left there thinking, wait, hold on a second. I thought we were going to get married. We've been together for five years. My life is over naturally as any girl that's young and that thinks thinks this way which i'm sure a lot of people do and i was like how is this happening what am i going to do now i don't know how to date i don't know how to be with another guy i don't know how to like okay take my number i don't know how this works you know it never happened to me and i don't want to date like what is this i'm 27 it's just not for me but i could tell you now that that was the best thing that ever happened to me the best thing that ever happened to me was giving me another shot at life to be single to find myself, not another guy, to find who I want to be when I'm not with a man, who I want to be in my, who I, what I want to do in my career, what are my interests? Because if you're with someone for too long, sometimes you lose sight of what you like and you assume what you both like is what you like. But when you're not together, you're kind of like, but I don't really like this. I was doing it because I'm compromising on a preference of a movie, for instance, or a style <coughs> of film. Yeah. So, Being single after that for five years was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And having found Wael at the very end of it was a light at the end of the the tunnel. tunnel. And people always assume, and I used to get this on Instagram a lot, but how, what do I do? I'm 26 and I'm not married yet and you give me hope. And I'm like, dude, you're 10 years younger than me. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard. It's hard for girls and I get it because they don't know that it will be okay. That's what they, they just don't know that it will be okay. And the best version of okay, it's not always okay. I'm going to rectify that because it's not all roses. It's only okay if you remember that you come first, how you take care of yourself, mm. building your growth, your confidence, your mindset, you become attractive for you, for somebody else, if this is what you want, to find you attractive. If you don't find yourself attractive, if you are somebody complaining and nagging about where you are and waiting for someone to pick you and not for you to, you know, kind of pick, you mm. pick, <laughs> no. be good mm. enough to say, I'm going to pick who I want to end up with, right? If you just lose yourself that you're not going to be attractive for yourself or for anybody else so but how long did it take you to to realize and land of course and hell and now bad kids she's our mic you're married okay she and you look back at it you know uh you're like okay it was amazing best decision yeah mm-hmm. but after the breakup yeah and how long did it take you to to realize and خلص, you know like أكيد مش فقت بيوم بيومين no, no, no. عادي فأنه أكيد you went through a kind of down crash ha, was about six ha, months exactly six I was, months uh, I would say three months <coughs> was I can't believe this is my life what just happened to my life mm-hmm. after the three months I'm smiling again I'm going out again I'm kind of like ah mm-hmm. oh, I like this guy he's cute or I want to travel to this place or where do I want to what do I want to do next so I started having hopes and aspirations and like comfort in in life right mm-hmm. and what's what's next 
uh, maybe at the beginning you're kind of waiting for him to call back and say I messed everything up. You know, maybe you go through that phase at the beginning, but then after that you're kind of like, you know, what, I'm over I'm over waiting. I'm more into what I want to do. So I would say it would took about 3 months for me to not wait or care anymore on the fourth, fifth, sixth month started to kind of test what I like, what I want, started booking things that made me uncomfortable. That was my thing. What would make Tracy uncomfortable? I did it. I'm going to travel by myself to Africa <coughs> for a volunteer program for two weeks in Zimbabwe by myself. <laughs> Great. I'm booking it. I went. Um, I caught dengue fever. I got like, <laughs> um, skydiving, uh, jumping from like a gorge. I was doing all those things. And maybe they're a bit extreme because it was kind of a release for me or a, a, a means to kind of, you know, distract myself yeah. and forget which not it's not necessarily the healthiest, but at least it was something that was mine for me that wasn't toxic to me. It was actually bringing me, li- bringing me life. It wasn't like I'm going out partying. You, you know dealt what I with mean? it, right? Yeah. Um, what else? I made loads of friends, started traveling a lot by myself. I would go meet people by myself. Um, they would book a villa somewhere, but I would just go book my apartment. I'd do Ibiza, for instance, for mm. two weeks by myself, apartment. I met a lot of people there. They were all my friends. Uh, from there, I started, uh, I did a lot of Europe, uh, traveled around, did a lot of excursions and stuff like that. Um, it was it was great. Yeah. I mean, I had a I You had, had a your way to, to overcome it. Yeah, yeah I had yeah. a good time. And then <clears throat> I started jumping in my career. And then the beauty is that you think you don't know how to be alone until you love being alone. <laughs> you end up leaving a relationship thinking, okay, but who's going to like, how, how am I going to, you know, be by myself? Like no one's here. No one's sharing this moment with me. And then sometimes you end up distracting yourself with a lot of going out and so that you're never at home by yourself. But at some point you will know you're happy when you're by yourself, when it's mm. a Friday night and you just want to pick up a book and read mm. and sit in silence in your house. Like that's mm. when you know that this is jackpot. This is what happiness is. I yeah. do not need to distract myself on a weekend or with somebody the joy is just ha- hanging out Within with myself. Yeah. yeah. Now, what you're saying is super relatable. But uh, it's not about me. Uh, maybe if, if we move on to the to the second point, uh, which is a topic maybe that you covered a lot. Okay. And it's about the, the children aspect. Kamena, uh, many of my friends, uh, 27, 28, 28 year olds. No, yeah, let's make jobs, but but I know, I know, guys, I know. And for me, I know, on just it'll come on its own. That, that, maybe I know, I'm, I'm not uh, a girl, you know. For my body, you're definitely not a girl. Maybe I'm not. Maybe sorry, I know. As they can, maybe because I'm not a girl, that's uh, why I don't understand them. فميبي هيك هيك فيك تعطيهم كلاريتي لانا يعني او تفهميني الي انه ليه ما عم بفهم عليهم انه ليه ما عجلين عرفتي كيف؟ Look it's it's tricky because there's yeah. no right or wrong answer. Mm. But there's my personal opinion. Mm. My personal opinion is having choosing to be married or committed to someone forever. It's a very long time. Choosing to bring a new generation into this world and having the patience, the know-how, the skills to raise that person to be the best human it could possibly be, woman or man, then you should be damn sure that you're making the right call. And it's not about, I just want to have kids. You forget what that entails. And if you don't know what that entails and you just want children for your own satisfaction you're making a huge mistake mm-hmm. because you end up selfishly having kids for you, but not so much about who the, the time and the effort that you want to put into bringing up this person. And it's fair for you to want kids and you could be 22 and have kids and do it a beautiful job. Don't get me wrong, but it's hard. It's very, very hard. And if it's true that you grow wiser and calmer and more confident with age and time, then shouldn't it be more logical to give it time before you make a call like that? And shouldn't it be more logical to say, let me pick the right man first. Mm. And when there's a good mesh, then I could say, now I feel like having kids because I'm in a right 
structure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As opposed to, um, I want kids first. So, okay, who's the next guy? Like, I really want to get married and I really need someone because I want kids. I think one should come before the other, you know, and maybe you want to have kids by yourself, Mm -hmm. depending on where you live in the world. It's depending on your financial needs and how you can, and you can do it. I think if I were to have kids by myself, I could very much do it. I don't think I'll struggle, but it's a very hard decision that I'm not going to do just because I just think I want kids now. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're 26, 27, and I would not say the same thing to someone who's 37, 38, 39, because I feel enough life and time and, and Mm -hmm. they've given them enough space before making that call. They have enough wisdom and clarity to make that call 26, 27, 28, it's still the beginning of your life. I mean, you're young. You're so mm-hmm. young. Like, yeah, no, to stress it. Is exactly. Crazy. Don't stress it. And that, that's mm-hmm. my point. And I agree. And I, yeah, and I'm a bit and of a urgency. I'm a bit of a stress. And 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 I'm a bit of a stress. I'm a bit of a stress. And I'm a bit of a stress. And I'm a فكر بشغلي عرفتي كيف انه it will not turn out the way I want it to turn out yeah. I don't know if it's true but I think I agree in the sense where it's almost like what I was talking about earlier about working on yourself like be an attractive person for you before expecting other people to be attracted to you mm. it's the same thing like <coughs> you kind of work on you do your thing so that you gravitate these things towards you as opposed to you kind of chasing after them you Definitely. know yeah, and uh, just as an add-on, uh, do you think that this uh, urge that arises from like, okay, I want to marry and I want to be with someone and I want to have kids arises from the topic we were talking about earlier, like, okay, so you see your friend on social media or you see this person having a wedding. Of course. And you want to like do what they want to do. So yeah, social media. Of course. Talk. It's not just social. I mean, I, I can imagine even if social media didn't exist mm. back in the day, 10 years ago, your best friend gets married, your other best friend gets married, yes. and you're like, why not me? I had so many jokes uh, with, with that Velik my whole life because all my friends got married younger than me. So that Velik was like the <laughs> worst sound you could say to me. I used to answer like, Habelik, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that, خلاص, you know, no. and why Habelik? What does that really mean? It's almost like you're saying, if if you tell me, for instance, oh, congratulations, do you have uh, 300,000 followers on Instagram? Thank you, Abelak. Nah, no, no, no. like, yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, why do you? Maybe that's not. Maybe your that's goal. not what I want. Exactly. <laughs> like, why, why, am I, why am I making the assumption that that is your goal too? Yeah, you know. And I agree. Thank you for my joys and celebrating yeah. with me, and I hope you get it too. You know, la. Totally agreed. Tracy, I want to talk about a phenomenon that you've preached a lot, and that is uh, egg freezing. Mm-hmm. First of all, I want to like uh, show my support because uh, you put all the information online and I think this is like detrimental, especially nowadays, because I don't think that's a topic that's spoken enough mm-hmm. about. So spoken about, you know, so um, how did you like, uh, like if you can walk us and elaborate through the process of how did you like adopt this uh, phenomenon? So, um, so why did I? walk people through it or why did I do the egg freezing or both? Both. Okay. So egg freezing because I didn't want social pressure or pressure, biological pressure, because you could say, yeah, but I don't care. But at the end of the day, we do have a biological clock and it's ticking whether we like it or not. I did not want to make any informed decisions about having children based on that. I wanted to have children based on the right call, the right security of my home, financially, uh, stability, uh, the right love in the home and all of those things before I make the call of having children. So provided that I'm 36, I was 35. What did I do last year? Mm, last year, the year, yeah, last, last year, year. 20, yeah, May, uh, May of last Abel year. Sine yeah, I yeah, think. the May of last year. Um, I made the call because I wanted to be easy. And I also saw a couple of examples around me where people got married that are very close to me. They couldn't have kids or they didn't want to have kids or something happened. They had to delay having kids and they've been married three, four or five years. And I didn't want to be in that situation without a safety net, without insurance policy, let's say. Mm -hmm. So my insurance was to freeze my eggs so that 
if for whatever reason I need to delay, if for whatever reason I want child number two and I'm 40 and I'm finding a difficulty, I have my reserve. That's why. Why did I decide to talk about it is because I wish someone did it for me. Mm. Because I had to do so much research. I luckily had two friends that did it before me. So I sat and drilled them with questions. But how is this? What does this mean? And researching online, when when a doctor talks to you about it, you're kind of like, yeah, but you've never done it. So I kind of want to talk to someone who's done it. You You could tell me or talk at me, but I'd rather someone kind of that was in your it, shoe. that yeah. was that will be but that was in my shoes and I could actually relate to you know <laughs> 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 exactly so sometimes you want to hear it from someone that did it before you so yeah. I figured this is not a Tracy issue this is a every single girl <clears throat> interest that you know what maybe this will this will be so beneficial to me so it's kind of my duty on social media not just to talk about my app but mm. also to give what people want what, what people can learn from social media is meant to be a place where people pass on information whatever the information they can offer and if i could offer this as a you know this is how i'm doing it you know, i'm learning it i'll learn it with you guys i'll just put the phone over here show you what's happening and as simple as that and as i was doing it i'm like okay cool it's not so bad it's not so bad it's not so bad so when someone's watching it to say day one looked like this they do look like that it may be First of all, it not only triggered people to do it, which I was very proud of, yeah. but you have no idea how many people told me I've never heard of this before. And that <clears throat> shocked me because you have technology and the science to give you choice right now. And you have no awareness of that choice is not a good sign for our society. You have to have all the information. Imagine some girl finds out five years and 10 years late that I could have done that and I didn't do it. And you imagine the pain that she feels, which I've read so many messages on Instagram telling me, I wish I knew and now I'm 45 and it's too late for me. Mm. I didn't even know this existed. Not that I didn't have the money to do it. Not that I did. I, I would, I would knew, but I didn't do it. I didn't know that this was an option. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's not talked about enough. Exactly. I, I love that you put the entire process. <تصفيق> literally انا هلا هول الرفقات اللي كانوا عم يحكوا بقول حضروا هاي خذوا هاي احتروها روا يعني لان مثل ما قلت انه picking the right person is, is more important to pick the wrong person than having kids with them ف كمان في كثير هيك mainstream topics that keeps on getting repeated repeated on instagram yeah, for talk this stop when you see specific. something like that i you feel خلص you're going to be engaged one two you're going to see what's going to happen because as you said like you're walking through a journey so that's day one that's day two mm. what's happening on day 10 will it work yeah will but, you be and the, in our right? in our culture things like this are hype هيدا اللي كنت اجي بيقولوا عنه تابو هالموضوع انه هيك شو بتحكي عن هيك شيء it's private هلا mm. private is relative for me the secret exactly. this is not private at all no. i'm not airing my laundry i'm not talking about something that is you know that she fake هذا ايه انه this is black it's educational mm. and it's not you know i don't know if if i struggle to have kids inshallah love us if i ever struggle to have kids you i have will not find it and not us من من ما بنقص from my value from my worth I just happen to struggle to have kids full stop and I will be perfectly fine to say it and the fact that society states those things as عيب is exactly why people are uneducated about what your options are about how to go about it maybe ask a friend but you because you think it's so عيب that you don't even want to share it with your own friends to help you walk through this process or guide you or tell you, look, maybe we, this is what you could do. So people keep to themselves a lot in our society when mm-hmm. it comes to topics like this. I It's totally much agree. more helpful if we're all talking about it, right? I so much more helpful. Creating awareness. But I'm uh, is it accessible to everyone? When I say accessible, يعني, is it affordable? Look, it's not cheap. It's, it's not $5,000 cheap. here. Mm. The total, pro- the, all the process. The whole process is $5,000. Yeah. Okay, you can pay it in installments in the place that you go to. Uh, I checked three or four <coughs> facilities. They're all around $5,000. In Lebanon, you could do it for $2,000. Mm. Uh, as long as the fridge, you don't lose your eggs over there. But at this storage, come in the Senate, if I storage the Senate. $400. Okay. 1,500 dirham here. Mm. Every year you renew the storage. But like you're paying your, your medical insurance. Mm. I paid one time 
insurance for freezing my eggs. It's like a fee of you covering your own medical insurance. Okay. You know what I mean? Definitely. So you're, it's, it, I always say this, that something is only expensive when it's not your priority. You're not going to spend money on something that's not a priority to you. I will not spend on a 20,000 dirham handbag. It just will never happen. But I will put this money on egg freezing because it's important to me. It's relative, right? What is important to you is what you'll be comfortable to allocate your money to. Yeah, I mean, it's your continuity. It's your kids. It's your future. So, of course, you're going to think at least about investing this kind of money. Of course. JC, I want to shift gears a little bit. And um, I want to ask you regarding your deepest fears. So, what are like some deep fears that you have that you try to avoid? Uh, what, like... If you had to like choose three fears that you feel, uh, three like things you fear the most, what would they be? ما ضروري يكونوا صاروا. ما تخاف شيء يصير بعدين. يعني مش إنه فوبيا أو خوف من شيء يعني. Yeah, مش إنه spiders. مش إنه spiders أو afraid of heights. Fears. أنا ما ضروري يصير بس إنه. No, I'll tell you. Yeah, but just give me a moment. Take your time. That's what I'm going to do. 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 That's what I'm going to I would hope to God that my kids will reach an age where when I'm old, they want to still come back to me for answers, for wisdom, for advice, for friendship. And if I don't have that, and if I wasn't a good enough parent to offer that in the long run, then I'd be very disappointed. Um, I think a friendship with your parents is earned. It's not expected. And whatever you do as, as a parenting choice in those ages or the years where your kids are most vulnerable, where they can't fight back or answer back or understand, mm-hmm. it will bite you in the ass in the long run. You may think that you have the power right now, but if you fast forward, your kids are old enough, they're 25 and they're 30, and you wonder why they don't call you or ask about you, maybe you have your answers because you weren't a friend to them when they needed you when they were at their most vulnerable. My fear is if I become that kind of parent. Mm. And I don't want to be that parent. <laughs> wow. I really like your answer, Lano. We ask this question a lot, but it's the first time you know, someone yeah. answers from a parent point of view. Yeah. And like something you wish to avoid later in the future, <coughs> not something that's exactly. like, uh, tangible or something. But regarding this point, uh, mm-hmm. يعني, Anna, I think, and how do you think بس لازم دائما كمان يكون في a bit of firmness or discipline maybe in areas uh, where at the moment the kids uh, will not realize مثلا انه اذا كل يوم الولد بده ياكل شوكولا انت مره قلت عرفت انه كل يوم بده ياكل شوكولا لا at some point بدك تقول له لا انه no, it's not good for you حيبكي بس هو الامبورتنت ثينج يرجع يعني he will notice later on that okay she put this firmness on me And because of that, yeah, he will stay oh, close. So no, I'm not talking about discipline or mm. blackness. I think there should be a lot of discipline. There should be enough discipline where you don't need to scream at yeah. your child. Definitely. As an example, I'm saying as Agre- an example. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. If you don't need to scream or hit your child, let's say, mm. to get them to respect you. If you're parenting correctly, a look could make them Oof. shit their pants. <laughs> <laughs> a basic look could make them feel, oh my God, I really don't want my mom to be yeah. disappointed in me. I can't believe what yeah. I just did. Definitely. And if I have the power, the emotional stability, which is hard when you have kids, um, and this is why people need to meditate and work on themselves, because not only for you to be you know, all Zen, but it comes in things like this when You want to teach your kids not to fight or not to scream, but you're screaming and fighting and hitting in your own house. Then how are you expecting them to go out to the world and not yell at their boss or yell at their subordinates or or and yeah. expect them to deal with with anger and management correctly when you didn't know how to deal with anger and management in your own home? So this stuff is is quite important to me. Mm-hmm. Totally, I agree. want to think about big mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Totally, no, perfect. And in addition to the fears that you just mentioned. Uh, 
do you regret anything in your life? And if yes, like, what is the something that you regret the most? I'm not yes, I'll say it back. No, relax. But I like to take like my to time think. to answer it properly. I love it. Appreciate it. Um, look, the the uh, there are mistakes in my life, of course, but it's very cliche to say I don't regret them. But having not done those mistakes, for instance, how I've treated people or how I've treated an ex-boyfriend or how mm. I've um, dealt with a certain situation, how I've yelled in a certain context, things I'm not proud of, I just feel like I could have done that better. Uh, how I dealt with colleagues in my old job, let's say, there's always that one person here, that one person there. But if I hadn't done those things, I probably would not know how to manage myself as a person, as a character today. And I do that very well now because I'm like, I never want to be this person or that person or this person, even if it's not just the old Tracy. But even if I'm looking around me, I'm like, nope, not going to happen. I'm not going to be you. I'm going to be a bit of you, but I'm never going to be that, you know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so no, I wouldn't say regret per se one incident, but a characteristics that I had yelling or, or, or impulsive. I didn't like that, how I used to be like that with my ex, for instance, I would, in fact, like Wa'al and I have a rule, no yelling in the house. There is no tone higher than this. Mm. Like the maximum would be, why did you do that? Mm. This would be the mm. max. If my tone goes a little bit higher, his tone goes a bit higher, we're like, maybe what is that? And it's a weird sound. No, the sound doesn't exist in our house. We laugh it off. So proud of myself for changing so much and for wanting peace and quiet. You know what I mean? And I don't look after the drama, you know? Yeah. I think one of the foundations, you know, for, for, for any relationship, not just husband, friend, uh, co-worker, colleague, is, is respect. That's the thing. I mean, definitely. what do you gain from, how do you ever expect somebody to want to hear you or listen to you if you come into a conversation with ego <laughs> screaming or with uh, the audacity to think you're, you're above somebody? I mean, mm. nobody's going to want to hear you out. Not your boyfriend, not your friend, not a colleague. If you go into the, into a place with like authority or with with a tone, mm. you're never going to get what you want. You know, I mean, I agree. how much nicer is it to be able to say something nicely, mm. to express yourself and your emotions sure. correctly, for someone to feel empath- empathy with you, or empathetic towards you to say, you know what, I'm going to have a listen. Maybe I don't agree, but I'm actually going to listen. And to be able to listen as well. Yeah. Why would yeah. you want to listen if someone's going in all guns blazing? Yeah. You would have, you know, you would think about like his tone more than what he's actually saying. So exactly. That's <laughs> All you're thinking about is like, why, why is he talking to me like, like this? this? No. You're never going to win, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, Tracy, if, if we move a bit, uh, shift gears to your career a bit. First thing, I was in IB. What made you go to IB? Not IB, high school system. لا لا سوري مش هاي سكول عم وقت اقول اي بي كان قصدي انفستمنت بانك اه اه اوكي سوري لا لا ماي باد وزنت سينج ات بروبرلي بس ايه وات ميد يو جوين ذا فاينانس اندستري اند اند اي بي از ذا فيرست موف ان يور كارير اي جوت اي وزنت لوكينج فور فاينانس بات باك ان ذا داي اي موف تو دبي جرانتد 15 ييرز اجو سو ذير واز ليميتد سبلاي اند ا لوت اوف اور ليميتد demand and a lot of supply limited demand and, and jobs and you know, there's a lot like a few ro- there's market a quite, diversity quite market. a bit of roles oh. but very little like quality people mm. so it was easier to get roles than it is probably now everyone's yeah, like yeah. you know <coughs> sharks in one here, role. Yeah. but uh, i wasn't looking for finance but i knew a headhunter who said i can help you mm. but what i'm good at is what i what i cover is the financial world and there's an opening at city group and i think it would be perfect for you Mm. Like, there's no way I'm doing finance. It's just not happening. After I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to try it out. After I went to the interview, um, I I kind of, so basically, long story short, but I took the job because I had a lot to prove to myself, to who I wanted to be as a person and to society. I just wanted to prove that I could do it because it was a killer job, a killer role. And a killer bank, one of the biggest in the world. Why the hell would I say no when it just came to me on a silver platter? Now, when I went to the interview, they told me you cannot take on this role unless you are an assistant on the desk. Tracy's ego at 21 years old was like, me, assistant. Uh. <laughs> But 
I parked my ego and I said, you know what? How long do I need to be an assistant before I can get an actual trading job until you prove yourself? I'm like, okay, so if I double the work, I shadow all the traders on the desk. I learn the job while I do the assistant job for all the traders on the desk and for my boss. Can I get a shot if there's an opening? And yeah, but you need to prove yourself. So late after hours, spent uh, overnights learning about trading, watching all the traders, covering for someone wants to go pee mm. in the bathroom. I sit, I do some <coughs> trades until they come back. Um, and then at some point there was like a redundancy. We lost a couple of people on the desk. And then I went to my boss's office six months later and I said, look, you're either going to hire a VP who's going to be very expensive for you or I will do the job that I've been doing anyway when I'm covering for people on holiday and on, on, on the mm. desk. As a junior, you'll pay half the price, but let me be a trader. He gave me the job. I'm like, thank Oof. God. Wow. <laughs> Not just, I know, having the, <laughs> having the, I know, I know, I'm like, one, two, three, I'm like, I I'm like, one, two, three, I'm like, I know. So yeah. that, that's something. But I was, I was in a, in a place where I was only working with men and they were all, double my age I and I yeah. had to be a shark yeah. to be able to get ahead if I was just like oh, okay whatever you want yeah. I'll be pushed around Pass when women are in this industry I, it's, it's it's difficult obviously uh, more than men and when you're a girl surrounded by men and pass my you need to push more than 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 usual I don't know حسب character تبع البنت كمان look I think I've always been a girl's a guy's girl. I all my friends are guys. I always do like added my shabib. I've <coughs> always loved the show of being with mm. guys, so it doesn't bother me. Um, but I've learned to have the sense of humor of, of how men joke, the attitude, the jokes. Like uh, the way I am as a person is very easy and light. So those I never felt I'm a girl and these are guys. I never realized it, Hatta. But I knew that I would not be taken seriously, me or maybe anyone, even if it was a junior guy in my place, probably would have never been taken seriously if your character doesn't match. Not because I'm a woman, but because if my character is not strong enough or pushy enough, I'm not going to get what I want. Mm. So I had to kind of, you know, claw my way in so that I can get to the places I wanted to get to. And a lot of times I lost, like I'd sidetrack later in my career. But on that specific one, I got very lucky having been a marketing uh, person, mm. studied marketing in school and landed a finance role <laughs> that a lot of financiers who studied finance forever would have yeah. died for. Yeah. And I yeah. got super lucky. I would never take that for granted. I would never take the industry for granted. I think a lot of my character grew because of mm-hmm. who I was. It's in a IP. tough industry. Mm. It's a very tough industry. Uh, how were you able, you know, to, يعني, we all know you left, but I know, how did you build confidence? Batid, you left at like 30, if, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 30, 31, maybe. 31, yeah. Okay, and uh, you broke off your last, re- f- the five year relationship at like 27. Do you think this mm-hmm. relationship, you went a crash, you went a crash, you went a crash, you confidence, you went self esteem, you went a crash. Yeah. You went a crash, you went a crash, you went a crash. ترجع بعدين هل بنا شيء ما عم اقول دايركتلي ريليتد الا انت تركت هيدا بس اند يو ثينك ات بيلد سم تريتس ذات هيلبت يو جين ذس كونفيدنس تو ليف اند تيك ذس هيوج ريسك ذات يو توك اي ثينك اتس نوت سو ماتش ذا بريك اب اتس اباوت مي وركينج اون ماي سيلف اند ميبي اف اي هاد ستيد ان ا ريليشن شيب اي بروبلي وودنت هاف بوش سو هارد بت ذن اجين ميبي نوت اي كود هاف ستيل بين ان ذات ريليشن شيب لايك اي ام ان ا ريليشن شيب ناو اند اي ام جروينج انتو hopefully a different version of a butterfly if I want mm. to. Um, and Wael is never going to hold me back from that. And maybe if at my age permitted, if I gave myself some time and I was out of my 20s and I'm a huge believer that people shift from 30 onwards, you become a woman, you become wiser, you calmer, smarter, if you're working on yourself. Because if you don't, it could go sour and you can be miserable and you could be more and more uh, bitter with age instead of more and more pleasant and, mm-hmm. and calmer right. So you really need to be doing the work in order to become that kind of a woman at 30. It's not going to just happen overnight. Black mm-hmm. is it could actually backfire if you're not doing the work. Agreed. Tracy, uh, I understand that uh, you left IB, so you wanted to fund your purpose. But I'm really interested in knowing if there was like any other reason that you left investment banking in general. 
like a huge no, trigger maybe mm. uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a trigger it was the last two years i was in in finance it was like the crash of the crash of the crash so it was <laughs> so ugly yeah. to be in the industry everybody hated their lives when you were in that in your roles and it no it no longer felt like investment banking it felt like begging for business so that there was a lot of head to head internally head to head with my last boss head to head with some you know like uh, you know people get made redundant you take someone else's job they take yours you have to move departments there was a lot of that stuff then finance just no longer felt cool or fun anymore no. it just felt like for a better choice of words but almost like a very salesy very like okay fine can you please get my product and no one mm. really wants to pick up the phone on you anymore it's almost like oh another person trying to sell me something i just realized i'm like i don't even know why i'm doing this mahadash i've been to be in an industry that i don't like anymore yeah. um there are certain characters that are built you know mm. when you 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 kind of hit rock bottom in the industry the ugly comes out and mm. the character of people just started coming out that i couldn't relate to anymore i just needed to find myself mm. elsewhere so when i started hanging out with a lot of the people that i was doing my travel trips with so the norways and the icelands and the people that were more lighthearted and cool towards life like this is where i this is where i need to project my energy i cannot be projecting my energy in this two dimensional little bubble in finance mm. anymore Mm-hmm. And did it like it take a toll on your mental health because like it had a lot of work investment packing in general? No. I would not say that. I didn't I don't I think I manage a lot of work well. I I'm cool when it comes to these things. But uh like anything else, I think just small difficulties and encounters that you have with certain people or certain tasks like It was burdensome and scary sometimes when I felt a role or a task was over and above me if I'm pitching to the chairman of X private mm. equity firm or to Goldman Sachs team I'm just like this is bigger than me I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> yeah. about this I cannot possibly face this these people and they're going to take me seriously so there was a lot of fear when it came to that that maybe I'm not up to the task and you almost feel like you're an imposter sometimes like I'm not supposed to be here especially me you know as I walked into that role not earning the role technically. Mm. I know technically I didn't work for the role mm. and ask for the role. Mm. I found the role mm. and I just so happy to figure out how I'm going to do it. So for many many years I kind of felt like an imposter in that role like I know that this, I'm not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be for someone else. No. But after 10 years I kind of said, you know what? I sure earned it. I've been here for 10 years, you know. I didn't just walk out after one yeah. year. After surviving a couple of years, you earned hey. it. Yeah. yeah, and you also once mentioned <coughs> that there was like a certain type of people that you didn't want to work with, mm. that you didn't want to be associated with. What happened? Who are the personas that you feel like they can't be identified with you or at least like under the same roof? Look, I don't like... And this is not just a, a finance thing, but I noticed it a lot in finance because mm. I see it today all the time. Mm. I don't like dishonesty. I don't like uh, selling something that is not realistic. This will also apply for social media. Yeah. Uh, you know, talking about things, uh, boasting about things, being a person that you don't want to be just because you want to entertain clients. I saw that a lot. And I'm just like, I, I, why am I here? Like, that's <laughs> how I used to feel all the time. Like, why am I sitting in this add it right now it's mm. not for me i don't like how these people are behaving i don't like the character of how they pitch a product that i know doesn't work in the industry why are we pitching this product you mm. know but it works like anything else but i had my time there my time in finance and it was just my time to get out it was one of those you know so mm. it's not so much the industry because you could feel that you can find the exact same flaws in all industries in anything mm. you find it in influencers on social media you find it with people selling cars to, to you you can find it anywhere mm. right mm. and uh before i uh, give you the floor Walid, i want to ask tracy about uh, one of the lowest moments you had in your life if you can walk us through it if any yeah okay this is a, a interesting one so i was this was like my lowest but my biggest Um, this was my lowest, but my biggest growth and my biggest uh, epiphany. Mm. I mm. 
transitioned. I, I think I got fired from a job or made redundant from one of my finance roles. And at that time, I left finance, okay, for a short while because I wanted to obviously find another job. And at that point, I was running out of money and I had no choice but to take anything that came my way. So a friend of mine said to me, listen, there's this role. It's some guy I know. He's in sales. He has a production company and he creates like the gondolas of like Carrefour, mm. you know, the stands <coughs> for Kit Kat yep. and whatever. He, like, he basically creates stages, stands for brands to do their like branding. He's looking for someone to help him do sales in that role. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> like that was like my initial reaction. egotistical yeah. young girl reaction. There is no way in hell I was working in DIFC and finance and I'm going to go to do a job like this. It's just not going to happen. But I had no other choice because I was running out of money. So I took the job and I remember the first day, two days that I went to this job, it was in some factory in El Coz, <laughs> rubble on the floor, no offices, working like in, in a factory co uh, concept. This was a long time ago. It was like, I want to say 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was distraught. I remember coming back home, crying. Yeah. Ambisha, you know, when you're yeah. just like, can't catch your breath every <sighs> single day for yeah. like a week to just think, what happened to me? Like, how did this happen <laughs> to me? ego. Dara bil ego more than anything else. Because I ended up doing that for like four or five months, six months maybe, until I found another job in finance. And I was so good at it. I had the flexible hours like you can't even imagine. I <laughs> met contacts all over Kit Kat, Nestle, Mars, whatever. All those companies, I met them all because I was helping this guy sell those products. I was working late nights in malls and stuff, putting up the stands. And at some point, I no longer cared. I was doing the job very well, getting paid well because I was getting mm. paid my base and commission. And commission. Uh -huh. So then I'm like, how would I allow my ego to think that a role is actually beneath me? Mm. No role is beneath anybody. And that was the moment where I felt, yes, my lowest, but then I triumphed, I would say, to feel like I will always remember that there is no role that will ever be beneath me. Mm. If shit hits the fan, if my I'm not making money, what else not making money, and my kids need to go to school and I need to pay for bills, I will do anything because there is no role that will ever be beneath me for me to think that it's not good enough for me to make money because this role is beneath me. Exactly. It just would never happen. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for this hard. answer, Tracy. Yeah. I'm sure it's very inspirational to be honest. Uh, Tracy, I have a question a bit uh, different. If you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would you want to have dinner with? Who would be these three people? All right, I really like um, Candace Owens. You guys know her? Hmm. No. Nope. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't want to say no. <laughs> Candace Owens is, uh, she's just very, very cool. She's controversial in many ways, but she is truthful. She's straight to the point. She's awesome. I mean, I just find her very cool. A lot of people will disagree. They will probably not like what she has to say, but she, they don't like what she has to say because she says things as they are, point mm. blank. Um, so she's she's pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second person is. You can look up. You can. I know his name. I just want to remember. So I don't get pronounce his name. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely I look them up. Name, I like how you're giving her very thought of answers. You know, <laughs> like she's putting the effort to select the right person. Just, I just want to I just <coughs> mispronounce his name. I was just watching his on YouTube. How did Allah tell Akid. I think and, uh, Jordan Peterson. Oh, uh, Jordan Peterson. I love this guy. I love, I, 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 I love this guy. Oh, who? Joe Rogan. <laughs> I, yeah. I was just watching the podcast now. Ah, actually. Yes, well, uh, <laughs> I'm not Joe Rogan. Very ham. No, we are. We are. We are. Three hours, yeah. maybe. Hell, yeah. recently, I'm an interview with this British guy. I forgot what what he's called. Can I'm talking about Ukraine and Russia? And he's talking about how. 
راح شاف كريستيانو رونالدو عزمه رونالدو على رونالدو عزمه على بيته لجوردن مشان رونالدو مش عارفين انه شو بده يعني كيف بده ينهي هيز كارير وكذا ف فيا اميزنج جاي اميزنج اي لاف هاو هي توكس اي لايك هاو هي ثينكس سيم ثينك ا لوت اوف بيبول جيت انجري رايت بيكوز دي فيل افندد by his honesty and his truthfulness and this is something i'm i'm very much vouch for um and another thing just to highlight is that i just feel like people should be more open to listening more so <coughs> than stubborn about what they know okay and i may not agree with some things that jordan says or candace says or may maybe do agree or maybe my mindset in general is uh, this is how i think but then candace says something for instance and i'm like hold on a second that's actually interesting Let me look into it a little bit more. You never see this any you don't see this. You see people getting so offended if they hear something that is not exactly what they're used to hearing mm. as opposed to saying let me have a listen. This girl probably saying this for a reason. Let me hear her out. Let me listen to other people that maybe think the same or differently and then make a call whether I agree with it or not. Yeah. Uh, Jordan and, and Candace kind of give you that freedom to question. Yeah. to reevaluate to say you know what let me let me reassess is what i'm thinking or has my mind had been right over the past several years or maybe it's time to kind of listen to a different direction you know yeah. and it's okay to to dabble with that we're evolving and we're changing human beings it's important to keep that open mindset you know that i i don't know why i had the point le انت قلتي لما بعرف ليه هيك my mind went and thought of lebanon mm-hmm. ليه ليه في عالم بعدا exactly. ما ما بتغير ما ومش من فتحة تفتح لشيء جديد exactly. خلص closed off مع انه كل الشيء عم بيصير حواليهم وما بدهم يغيروا ف yeah, that's, very that's definitely very sad to happen in Lebanon بس بعد في one more character yeah. uh, if, if you have in mind anyone هلا جو روجن <laughs> I love Joe Rogan actually because if I had to pick three it yeah. could be Joe Rogan he's cool Le- because I'll tell you why, <laughs> no, I'll tell you why Joe because I've, I watch a lot of his podcasts and I love what he does it's something that you guys probably already know that I've started my own talk show series Live with yeah. Tracy uh, Mitch no. Live with Tracy the talk show series What They Don't Tell Us What They Don't Tell Us yes yeah, I and watched I, the first one the yes. idea of what they don't tell us is exactly what it says mm. what they mm. haven't told us skills lessons uh ways of life that we should know and nobody really taught us back in school and the only way that we're learning it is through trial and error of life. Yeah. So Joe Rogan has visibility and and talks and insight to all these beautiful minds. Great oh. conversations, great chats. So if I could talk to him, tell him, talk to me. Tell me how you do <laughs> tell it. Tell me how, how you show make them me out. how to do it, please. Yeah. Um, that would be wonderful. Definitely. Uh, and regarding your show also uh, what they don't tell us it's live. Hala, episode 2 is out. Is and up. I saw the one one mm-hmm. episode which one was episode is up, but the impulsive human that I am uh, decided to get so excited and put my one episode out without Building. finishing my other episodes. So I made a promise that I will film at least six Yes. And I'm uh, f- four in at least six before I start dropping one at a time. So I don't make the mistake of putting one out and then disappearing on everybody. Yeah, super <laughs> looking forward to it. You made the announcement when's the second episode? No, uh, no? not yet. Not yet. Can you disclose? No, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. She doesn't want to commit. Uh, Tracy, uh, when you left uh, social uh, investment banking, uh, you were, many uh, I Anna, were you already like, an influencer or no when you no. left uh you- hold on let me remember no okay so i remember there was a, i was private on instagram um and i made my account public out of a dare i don't know if you know the story but no karen wasn dared me and no oh, you have really cool photos of when i was traveling you know my adventure trips Mm. And in Maoli, you only have like 100 followers and you have a private account. I said, there's no way I'm making my account public when I have CEO from here and chairman of here you know, on my radar. I'm not no. going to have them look at my private account. And back then, it wasn't a thing to put your photos out there. But she said, look, I'm going to put a post on my Instagram and I'm going to say, uh, if I get a thousand likes or a thousand comments uh, under five minutes, then Tracy will make her Instagram public. <laughs> 
I'm like, no one cares, Kevin, <laughs> about me putting my Instagram public. And funnily enough, she got a thousand oh, comments wow. under under five minutes. Two minutes. But I'm like, so I made my account public and I jumped from 100 to 2,000 followers like overnight. Wow. And uh, then I just left it open. Mm. When I left finance, that's when I started posting to show like I was bored and I was mm. going to the gym more. And I'm like, you know what? I feel like trying handstands for the first time. Let me just post about it. Let me show my fails and show how funny it is that I don't know what I'm doing. And people kind of related to it. Like, oh, thank you for showing me. Oh, my God, I can't believe you kicked up today. And last week you couldn't kick up. So I'm like, mm, okay, this no. is fun. Why not? Why not? Why not? And I kind of blew up. Because of that reason, I think I was just showing progress. And, uh, you know, after how long after, you know, you left your job, uh, did you realize, oh, I'm an influencer? I know if, if, if you like that this this title or not, some people, <laughs> but, and you are, you, you influence people, you uh, share your, your mm-hmm. thoughts, your your vibes, which which is very good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, يعني anyone can be an influencer. You know what I mean? But uh, it's a title, especially yeah, yeah, on social yeah. media. So, like, I'm not if there's a better when terminology. Did feel, when did I feel? When like did you realize you were like, okay, like, okay, now I'm a certain influencer, and this is something. When it hit you? Something I, I can monetize. I can work on. You know. I think I only realized I was considered to be when brands contacted me. I oh, don't feel they like they contacted you. Yeah, not, okay. like I remember Nike. I got a gig with Nike. I'm like, there's no way he wants to work with me. I'll do it for free. No problem. You know? Um, and then like, oh, Nike wants you to talk at the seminar. I'm like, why? Like, why me? I'm like, nothing to do with it. I think that's when I started realizing, okay, that's cool. Not so much about the followers making mm. me feel like an influencer. It was more of brands making me feel like I'm a person that could influence their, their brand, yeah. you know? And of course, when we say influencer, we know that's not like your only role. You have your entrepreneur as well. You're also a, a big uh, sportswoman that that represents, uh, you know, many different categories in sport, calisthenics, etc. Another important character, let's say, in, in your life is uh, the lovely Pancho. Is I'm not wrong I love him every time I, I see him, you know, in, in your stories. But I'm intrigued. I know why, why did you get a bird? You also said once you like snakes. I know at least you like, but you go to this pet store and you play with snakes. snakes. Yeah. For I like this exotic, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, I like, I'm very, I love animals. If I could have changed my life and become anything else, it would be like a zookeeper. Like my favorite thing in the world is any type of animal. Mm. Anybody knows it. I have a connection with animals like you can't even imagine. If I sit with a dog and 20 people are around the dog, the dog will come to me. It's like that. So yeah, I love all types of animals. I'm curious. I go and I play with snakes and the pet store. It's like normal for me. Uh, But with Poncho, I adopted him. So... Mm. I would have never made the conscious choice to buy a bird. It's just when people ask me, I, I want the same. Where do I buy it? Honestly, sorry, everybody. I don't answer because I don't condone it. I don't want anybody going around buying birds. I just don't like it. Mm. I adopted Poncho from a friend who was gifted Poncho. Mm. Okay, so she did. Okay, she's okay. also like very similar to me. She would never go buy a bird, but somebody gifted it to her and she thought I would rather him be with me than in a pet store and he's already domesticated. Mm. I'm going to take care of him. Uh, she just happened to have to leave. She had a very important gig to travel and work abroad. So mm. I used to babysit every time she would travel and then slowly, slowly the babysitting became longer and longer and then I ended up just adopting him. And for anybody asking, you cannot just release a bird into the wild. Pancho will die in three days if you release him. If he's domesticated, he's domesticated. That's not a look for his food or... I cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're the funnest pets. Uh, if you can ever buy or if you ever want a parrot, adopt a parrot. And if you can, give it a great loving home as best as you can. They will make beautiful pets. Um, just... Make a like, conscious decision, so, yeah. They're just lovely, lovely, lovely. <clears throat> but more so than anything else, I just feel like the flying is my is my... You know, they are like now Poncho's home. He's in the cage waiting for me to come home. I hate that. It just breaks my heart every time. But he's probably just sleeping or playing. I just don't like the feeling. He's only out when you're at home? Yes. Okay. Well, Otherwise, he'll, he'll, break, break, he'll, break, he'll, break, out the, he'll break everything if I'm not. Like, oh, he'll, he'll break everything. My laptop doesn't have keys. Like the Apple store know me because I'm like, hi, did I did break your keys again? Yes. So that they go and replace my keyboard. Like he's like that. He's a menace. 
Um, but when I'm home with him and I'm watching him, it's okay. I, I, he has certain places he can play. I watch him and it's fine. But if I'm not home and I let him mm. be. And how do you train him where to poop? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I unfortunately don't. But like I said, he has certain places he plays. So when he's yeah. done at this place, his poop is like so small. Yeah, yeah, I'll just clean yeah. up after him because oh, it's not like all over the yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. Jason. Unless I hear what and like, Jason! I look Jason. at the bottom of his foot. He's like, I hate this bird. He goes crazy. Yeah. JC, as we were discussing earlier, social media, as anything else, on its own pros and its own cons. And in terms of cons, one of the like most important or most popular, let me phrase it this way, is criticism or maybe free pressure. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you had to deal with pressure or sort of criticism from the comments on social media? All and how time. did you manage that? All the time. Uh, luckily, I have many more beautiful messages and I do negative but it's all the time you know if it's not in your DM it's on your comments uh, it, you know it, uh, you guys probably know it's very tricky to say anything on social media yeah. if you say mm-hmm. something it gets changed into a hundred different things and people hear what they want to hear and misinterpret exactly. what you say um, I just stop caring I'm truly truly as honest as possible I just barely even acknowledge it I'll see it I won't respond to it. I'll move on. I used to bother me so much more before where I'd be like, oh, no, but how did they say that? Now, look, hold on. Sometimes instead of like, you're ugly, if someone says something like this, okay, whatever, it'll, I'll make no reaction to it. But if someone says something hurtful or or untrue, takes the time to write a long te- text and, you know, vultures will come and comment and say, yes, correct, 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 because, you know, This is how society functions sometimes. Someone says one bad thing, a lot of people get excited and they're like, yeah, that's true. She's fake or she's this or she's that. Sometimes it gets like, you know, how do I how do I answer them? Mm-hmm. But from personal like experience with this, the best thing to do is just let the comment pass. Let the ignorance pass and move on with your life. Because what you need to care about, something I exercise and tell myself a lot, Who knows me? Who who do I care about? I care about the people who love me, who are around me every day, who who nurture me and who comfort me, and who, even my followers who who support me. I care about these people. I don't care about someone who's hating on me on something that they don't even know about, a topic they have gotten completely wrong or mm-hmm. misinterpreted or misunderstood. Why do I need to spend my energy here? Just move on. Yeah, definitely agreed. And um, previously, you mentioned that uh, no, uh, you collabed with Nike. I'm just curious, was it your first brand deal? I think so. Okay. I think so. It was my first uh, brand wow. collaboration. It start, it's nice to start with uh, Nike. Nah, I'm going to be Adidas. Allah, uh, in case you're listening to us. Hey, boom, I'm not. Okay. And uh, one more thing regarding social media. You also once mentioned that uh, using filters. It's kind of dangerous because it like invites some insecurities and it's like a loophole. And I see you putting filters. So ah, why is she looking so good? Let me put that way. Mm. It becomes like this vicious cycle. I'd like to call it. So what would be like an invitation or like an advice to start posting uh, your real self and your authentic self, like what you were discussing before? Like, Look, I don't I don't not like filters because I don't want you, know, you should tell me you have a filter on. I don't care if you put a filter on. It's nothing to do with your followers or me or anybody. You know, you should tell people if you have a filter or not. It's not so much that. My main reason for the filter issue is because I'm also a girl who has feelings, who has a heart, who has insecurities Mm. in situations that are going to be difficult for me to fight these insecurities. And one of them is filters. Mm. If I, the grown woman that I am, could find insecurity when I... put a filter i look drop dead gorgeous the second i put x i'm like whoa okay that's not me that moment triggers me i'm like shit but there's an option where i could actually look so much better Mm. if i was playing with that option so many times so often it will no longer just be a filter it would be me comparing myself to my better self if someone that's unrealistic that i can't be unless i get the right surgery or the right whatever and that on its own, is so detrimental to someone's mental health. So personally, I don't like to use filters because I think I look good 
as is. I'm worried that if I start using these filters, I'm no longer going to be confident in my own skin. Yeah. I'm no longer going to think that my face is decent enough or can pass. It doesn't pass anymore. What only passes if my eyes are lifted, my eyelashes are up, mm. my lips are up. <clears throat> and it's not your real self. Like I'm even more for doing Botox and fillers because at least that's your face mm. eventually. Mm. You can walk out and this will be you and it will build a confidence and a security in you if you feel like you, you want to change something. But the filter is an on off button. The second you turn it off, you look at yourself like it's not, it's a mask. You know what I mean? It's no longer your actual face. So I personally don't like to use it for me because I feel like it will make me more insecure. And mm -hmm. that's what I talk about. I don't say, who's using a filter, yeah. who's not. I don't mind. Whoever wants to do what they want to do, fine. I just like to bring awareness to the fact that maybe people don't realize that they're losing some confidence and security because of these filters. So maybe if you stop using them, and you get used to your normal face. You love yourself more. You start, you start yeah. liking your normal face. I'll give you like that a basic seems... example. I used to always, always, always leave my my house with makeup, like at least mascara mm. uh, and an eyeliner. I would never leave the house without. This is before. As I grew older and one day I ran out of mascara, I'm like, shit, how am I going to leave? My eyes are going to look like they're so small because I got so used to my eyes with mascara and eyeliner that the minute I take it off, I no longer recognize my bare eye anymore. Mm. It doesn't feel like Tracy anymore. Mm. When I mo realized that moment, I stopped leaving the house with makeup so many times. Like I would never go to the gym or to whatever, whatever with makeup because I'm like, whatever. And then with time, I started loving my bare face again because I got used to seeing my face look like that. Yeah. It no longer has to look like the girl with eyelashes and mascara. And this is my point with filters. If you keep using them over and over again, you're no longer going to be confident to look at your bare face in the mirror anymore. لا يعني it makes sense yeah. totally logical. طول الوقت واحد يسوي yeah. filters بس خاصة the people that use uh, you, that are used to posting a lot, putting lots of stories, taking lots of selfies, which is not wrong. But as you said, taking so many selfies uh, and using these filters خلاص بط بطل معود حالك ف totally makes sense and, and I've heard the comment where people said yeah okay you're not to talk Leno you look like this this is a comment I hear I heard a few times when I talked about the filters okay but no, other people need the filter but raison de plus not to use the filter <laughs> you know, that's my point you know, it's a better it's a bigger reason for you to say fuck it I need to work on myself I need to be confident with who I look like Mm. It doesn't give you the green light to say, oh, okay, so I don't think I look beautiful. So the filter is going to make me feel beautiful. No, it won't. It will actually make you feel 10 times worse if you're looking at that before, after, before, after, before, after, instead of working on loving who you actually look like. Mm. Uh, Tracy, you need sometimes to, you know, unlearn some stuff that you learn. Can you, can you explain? What do unlearn? Yeah, what what um, do you mean by that? It's like the stuff I touched on, you know, certain strategies or 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 demeanors or or lessons you learn mm. from your upbringing that you thought were correct, and then you have this open, curious mind in life to realize, wait, hold on, maybe this was not right. It was not the right way to do things. There's a better way to do it. That's that's pretty much what I'm thinking. More how your parents brought you up, the things mm. you learn of Lebanon, all these these lessons Muslim, that mm. you think. You know everything, but maybe it's time to unlearn and adopt a new Take a step back, yeah. thing. Definitely under, understood. Uh, how does Tracy stay in shape? Well, I'm, yani we know diet or exercise, but how do you keep this consistency? We can talk about انه بتنوعي شوي باللي شو عم تعمليه uh, قبل بركي كنت تركزي على different sports now paddle uh, other types of sports as well so you know, how do you keep this consistent uh, uh, fitness let's say look I think with, with food and with the, with the exercise it's a strength and a weakness for everybody mm. some people find strength in exercise but they have a weakness for food some people find strength in zipping their mouths but they cannot go to the gym to save their lives mm. so the only version of being consistent is to find something that's that long lasting mm. if you hate weight training and you start weight training you probably wouldn't last very long you'll be there for two months you'll give up 
if I put myself on restrictive calories, restrictive diet, no indulgence, and I stay on that, I will probably put up back all the, the weight that I lost because it was just too much for my body to handle. So a, a smart way to approach consistency is in sports, try a variety of sports. There's so many ways to be active. There is not a one size fits all. You don't need to weight train to be active. You could paddle, you could uh, run on Kite Beach, you could uh, go cycling, you could do uh, aerobics, dance class. There's a hundred versions of being active. One will stick. One will be like, I can't wait to go back to this place. It made me feel good. <clears throat> the rest will probably feel like hell. Yeah. Find the one that makes you feel like, oh man, I felt so good after this class. And that will be consistent. That's what I do with mine. I go for variety. I do... I, and I mix and match. Like I was telling you earlier, I don't. we're not too, that too dimensional. I believe that to be your optimal self, you need to test and, and work different muscles, different groups of muscles. Mm -hmm. And there's many ways to do that. So when I do weight training for a long time and I switch it up and I do gymnastics, I'm sore as if I haven't trained for like two years. I feel like my body's so tired because I don't work those muscles. I don't work explos explosive anymore. Mm -hmm. So I like to mix and match. And in terms of food, which is my weakness because I love to socialize food and have people over mm. and like mm. it's, it's the thing that is difficult for me to say the least um the i've tried many things and the thing that works the best is work hard on your on eating clean five days a week be flexible on your weekend mm. the five days a week may not be so pleasant you're not eating everything you want you may be restrictive in terms of the quantities in terms of the, the quality of your food but it gives you so much flexibility on the weekend. Mm. And I don't. I believe that you should throw your scale out of the house, but I really <laughs> highly believe that you should buy a food scale. A food scale. <clears throat> oh, okay. Throw, throw away your scale, but buy a food scale. But what, what, what's a food scale? Sorry. It's the food. It's the food. It's the food. It's the food. It's the your body changes overnight, mm. especially women, day-to-day, uh, -day, period of period, ovulation. Your body fluctuates five kilos, they say, on average, in the month, mm. up and down. So you will have the shock of your life when you see the scale moving around. It's painful, okay, to watch. Mm. but And it causes a lot of anxiety. And even if I know that I'm going to the gym and I'm fit and I'm strong, and I assume, oh, maybe now I'm a bit less and I see that my weight didn't move, all of a sudden I'm upset, like, how did my weight didn't move? Like I, I've been training so hard. Although if I didn't look at the scale, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I love the way I look. Mm. So the scale is fucking with my head. And I'm not going to let it anymore. Mm. That was yeah. a mindset I adopted. So I kind of parked it to the side. Okay. You could check it if you want for medical reasons once in a while, but the daily checking the scale is mm. ridiculous. So instead I would suggest the food scale. Why? Because there's nothing more frustrating then not knowing why you're gaining or losing weight. And this is a problem across the board. I don't know why I can't lose weight. I'm doing everything right. I'm going to the gym. I'm eating well. And a lot of people say that over and over and over again. And the biggest <coughs> reason I find is that they have no idea what they're putting in their bodies in terms of quality, in terms of quantity. And if they just learned, it's like an education, learn mm -hmm. that, you know what, actually... Three spoons of honey is not the same as one spoon of honey. Yeah. Or a steak that's 200 grams is not the same as a steak that's 400 grams. So mm -hmm. you may be eating steak, yes. But if your steak is 400 grams and you're putting four spoons of honey on your banana, your net net calories is not in a deficit, which means, of course, you're not going to lose, lose weight. weight. If you just knew this information, you'll be like, mm. oh my God, now I get it. So it's just informative. And then it starts becoming almost like a game. Like, oh, okay, so let me see. Hey, the 100 grams, or hey, the higgs, if the total calorie is this much, 100% I'm going to be in a deficit. It's math. Mm. Calories in, calories out. It's math, you know? But that's if people have a goal of losing weight. If you don't know why you're not bulking, and you have, uh, you're like, yeah, but no, I'm not bulking. I don't know. I eat a lot. I eat a lot. I'm great. You eat a lot. But part of your bulk as a man is you need to pump your protein. You need to fill your muscle with that protein and carbs, the right amount in order to bulk. You could be eating a lot, but if you're eating a manushe, it's not going to help bulk your muscle. You're kidding me. So if you 
kind of know your macros, know your splits and weigh your food, then you know that you're eating more than you you're burning on uh, mm. while you're not training. So then you know, okay, actually this is the right move. Now I make it's making sense. There's people go about food very ignorantly, me included in many ways, until you take the time to learn it. And that scale could help a lot. Mm. I totally agree. Yeah. If they're very worried about how- If they have an aesthetic goal. If yeah. you don't, if you then don't eat balance and you're fine. تعرف عن جد انا ما بشوف المي انا ماي ويت زنيه هيديك المره بيكوز وي هاد ا جاست لاست تايم براء الصباغ طلعت اوفر ويت انا ما عارف يعني قالت لي الحكيم بس انه فور مي ما بتاثر في عرفتي هلا آه عندي عضلات انا كثير فبركي هيدا اللي طلع ابيت اوفر ويت ف ريجاردينغ اكسرسايزنج شو بتعتقدي اهم اكسرسايز بركي حدا في هيك شيء اصلا انه yeah. اكسرسايز مهم حدا يعمله؟ uh, I think the foundation of every optimal human being is having strong muscles. Mm. So your age will vary, uh, your, your how you are with age will vary depending on your how intact your muscles are. your spine, your posture, it's all dependent on how your muscles, how intact your muscles are. If you're able to sit by yourself, stand by yourself, walk by yourself without a cane, without dependency, it will all depend on how strong your muscles are. Mm-hmm. If you could choose a workout that builds your muscle instead of burning your muscle for the long term and really strong muscles to keep everything intact, your spine, your posture, everything intact, your longevity of... having a useful, de- independent body is much more likely than not. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I would say weight training is very, very important. The type of weight training you like so that you have your muscles intact. So it's not just body or body weight training, but in, in the sense where you're, do- you're using your body, you know, it's not just like, yeah. you know, basics. It's you're using your body to carry weight, pull-ups and calisthenics. It's pretty yeah. much that. Uh, but building muscle in, in that regard and a lot of walking. People walking. really yeah. underestimate yeah. the yeah. power <clears throat> of steps. If you are eating exactly the same, you're not training, but all you're doing is 10,000 walking steps, you will lose weight mm. in it. There's no way around it because it helps your metabolism when you're flushing in that blood and walking and walking. Mm. Walk, it helps a lot with speeding up metabolism and burning. Like the sedatory, which we all do and sit at home, you know, even for myself, I was made aware that even though I train super hard one hour a day, the rest of the day I'm sitting on my desk working seven, eight hours. It's, I'm considered inactive. Mm-hmm. Me. <laughs> is, that, is that Tracy an active inactive person? Yeah, must, yeah. I'm not even considered an active person because a one hour of a workout a day, even if it's very intense, and the rest of the day I'm sitting, puts me in the category of inactive. Mm. When I start moving around, my job makes me walk or um, uh, go to meetings. You're walking, you take a walk on Kite Beach at night if you have to, but just to add some basic activity throughout your day, then you're in the category of active. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you for for this insight to هذا uh, الشيء يعني I think many will, will benefit from especially التركيز على عضلاتي كنت بنيهم بس شو معقول يكون في يعني قلنا شو المنيح في شيء exercise عالم بركي بتعمله uh, some activities that you don't recommend potentially uh, I don't know maybe maybe there's no such thing I wouldn't say not to recommend but I would say uh, just be aware that this I hear this question a lot from runners Mm. I run, but mm. I'm burning muscle. Like, I don't have muscle. Uh-huh. So long marathon running burns and eats away from your muscle. Mm. Sprints, short sprints, builds muscle. So if you just pull out, if you want a photo, of a marathon runner versus sprinter and look at their body types, you will see a huge difference. A sprinter is muscle mass because that explosive speed Oof, builds uh. muscle. Long-term running... when you're doing cardio to lose weight, but you're also losing your muscle, you're wondering why long-term running eats away from your muscle. Slow, mm. slow, long runs mm. eat away from your muscle. So if you were trying to build muscle and shed fat, sprints is a much better option than long-term running. Mm-hmm. Amazing. That's like a... 
and it's good insight. Good insight, insight. As well. And I was wondering if you like follow any certain type of diet, and if you have like any recommendations for like certain type of diets. Um, uh, I look. Me as well as everybody else, our mm. bodies keep evolving and changing. Um, I've tried a lot of things, and there is no one size fits all. I have to be very, very clear. Mm. Mm. Whatever I say is not set in stone. It's not the right way to eat, but it is what is working for me right now. Because maybe four years ago, my body was a bit different, and things that I was able to digest was worked, but now it's not working. Yeah. Right now, I'm pretty much going for, uh, I'm pretty much on an animal-based diet where I'm high on protein, high on lean meats, um, organs. I have them as supplements primarily and a lot of fruits, honey, um, sometimes raw dairy and vegetables, but not the lettuce and the, mm. or, uh, and the, and the chemical enzyme based vegetables anywhere where they have you know raw raw vegetables rooted vegetables it is mm. the the outcome of vegetables so like uh, zucchini mm. instead of a, a plant yeah instead of a kale maybe you like know, broccoli rather, or something like that solid uh, vegetables uh, like, uh, like, like a less solid. rooted vegetables so let's say yeah. zucchini uh, pumpkin mm. Uh, mm. The, the, like <clears> the fruit <throat> of the veg of the be- of the stem you know what i mean not so much the stem itself mm. i'm starting to get a bit bothered by the lettuce and the kale and the rocca, those things are starting to bug Mother. bug me. Yeah. And from studies, they show that they have a lot of chemical enzymes protecting them from being eaten from back in our ancestry, ancestry days. So that's yeah. why they create a lot of chemical enzymes that are not easily digested by some people. Other people, flows easy. Right now, I'm just finding my body's digesting and feeling much more comfortable. And I'm very much in tune to my digestive system like when i'm eating and this is very new for me in the past two years i've been doing this for a year i listen to my body after i eat how is this making my stomach feel and if people are just listening to what their bodies are feeling they will know what to eliminate the halon mm. what is really working for me what's not sometimes exactly. when you're mixing so many things and you're like i don't know why i'm bothered you don't even know what food was bothering <laughs> yeah, you in yeah. the first place you know exactly. so now if i have a steak i think how's the steak making me Mm. Am I digesting it properly? Am I comfortable? Do I feel bloated? No, great. I could keep eating steak. If I'm doing this with cheese and I'm like, oh my God, I'm feeling so bad with cheese, I just eliminate it. it. Just listen to your body. That's the best thing you can do. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody out there. Try what, hear the advice of people that are doing the research. Try what works for you. And what works, works for you, not for anybody else. That's what matters. Mas Walid, before you ask her one of the final questions, Mitch, why you were mentioning uh, smart like approaches to stay consistent, <laughs> mm-hmm. but what are like some smart approaches to stay motivated? Yeah, so the the key for motivation is to inhibit small daily habits. Mm. If you forget about those small daily habits, you will lose track of motiv- well, I will lose track of motivation. Let's talk about me more so. Yeah, if I know that the optimal self of how I'm going to create my day is to wake up, to meditate, to journal, to read one chapter a day, mm. then um, to obviously to make my bed, to go to my to go to gym, and then do one productive, one huge productive task, three four small tasks. At the very least, I know that خلاص, my day started on the right foot. So then that productive task will get done. When I lose sight of the beginning, when I'm like, I'm in meditation this morning. I don't need to, turn, I don't need to read this chapter. That becomes one day, two days, five days, six days. I lose sight completely of the rest of the day. It, and him, like ch- Starting with the small basic habits atomic of habits. life. Atomic habits. Starting with the small basic habits of life <laughs> is a game changer <clears throat> for productivity, at least for me. And I know myself when I don't do them, I lose track of everything. Totally agree. I mean, we've talked about micro habits in season one. Uh, Tracy, we've talked a little bit about you. After two or three questions, we'll talk a little bit about trivia. I'm here. We'll talk a little bit about trivia. First thing, quickly, about Lebanon. I don't know if the situation is under the situation. If the situation is better, would you ever think of 
going living there again you, you lived a decent bit of your life ala ba'tid se sar lik bi dubai aktar mimma kunt bi lebnan ba'd ma tashi 15 sene yani bas would you ever think of going back uh izal wada sar mi shi an al wada sar yani stable إذا بدك ترجع في كهرباء يعني 2000 نوت جود انف يعني اي اي دو لا لا نوت فور الكهرباء بس يعني ستيبل <تصفيق> سيتويشن يعني اذا بترجع مثلا 2016 يعني <تصفيق> الوضع بلبنان واز نيفر ستيبل يعني بعد 2005 يعني ات واز اولويز ابس اند داونز بس انه قطع اربع خمس ست سنين ما صار في انفجار يعني ليتس سي لوك ذا رياليتي از اي بين هير فور Years, my first 10 years, let's say, or nine years, it was always such a sad moment when I left Beirut to come back to Dubai. I would cry. I'd feel so sad. How am I leaving again after mm. a holiday? Mm. And there was always this feeling of if I was able to live here and make the money that I'm making in Dubai, then I would so move back. Six years ago, everything changed. I count my blessings for living in Dubai mm. because it is super unfortunate that the basic necessities of life have to be the first thing on my tongue when I'm living back home for a holiday. Where's the Kahraba? Where's the Mai? What's happening on the streets? Ooh, this, uh, this bad thing happened. That bad thing happened. Bad news all the time. Negativity all the time, which trickled down to everybody's personality. Everybody in Lebanon has anxiety. They're angry. They're upset. They are aggressive. Um, they're not productive anymore. The most productive people that I knew in the region have lost all the drive and full rightedly. Totally understandable. But how am I going to live somewhere like this? How am I going to move on and carry on with my life and my career and, and all of that in, in a place where you're starting 10 steps back? It's like they mm. they're making it hard for you. Like this is an obstacle course for you. Try to make it through life. How are you going to do it? So no, I will not go back to Beirut now mm. as upsetting as it is. And I hate the fact that a lot of people are stuck there, maybe not wanting to be there. And a lot of people are staying there because they love their country and they want to be there. But I've been out for too long for me to say it's a good call for me to go back to Lebanon right mm. now as mm. it is. Mm. Mm. What does it mean for people, for the country to change? It means people are back to being productive. The economy is working again. Uh, there's a shot at life and, and a career and progress and like you know that 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 would be a good call for me to move yeah. it's not just about electricity and water and okay. ac you know it's a shame it's a it's shame and بحس حرام لبنان اللي بياكلها الضرب يعني عارف لانه كبلد يعني it's, it's a beautiful country uh, with lots of potential بس uh, unfortunately that's why we all keep going the people back. the people who run it uh, Or uh, quite Bella man kabir bil haki Okay Thank you about that Sooale Le andi ya ilik If you can give an advice to yourself When you were 18 Advice about life Anything Hala about kil khibra Kil shi il marakti fi Shu one advice Plat ya lal 18 years old Tracy Let things follow through Be patient um, Don't <coughs> Overanalyze things that never happened because they probably won't happen. Mm. Definitely agreed. And um, the final question before we move to our trivia segment, Allah Walid asked you what one advice would you give to your 18 year old self? But what one advice or like message? A message, yeah, like a general message you would give to uh, the people, the audience who are watching in terms of like uh, social media or health or entrepreneurship or anything you want at all. One final message. Oh, right. You're not too away. old. <laughs> You're I not too facts. old to get married. You're not too old to, uh, to to find a husband. You're not too old to have kids, obviously, within reason. Mm. Um, you're not too old to change careers. You're mm. not too old to go after what you love, to do things that are uncomfortable, to push your boundaries. You're not too old. It's not too late. Just go for it. Mm. Perfect. Now, there's a segment called Trivia. Okay, so it's general questions. Gayarna uh, shwayil format. Abel, we were keeping it open ended. Now we're giving, uh, we're giving four <laughs> options. Lander, really general. You know, it's it's nothing 
سبيسيفيك وقت اقول جنرال بس بيكونوا سبيسيفيك هن طيب ليتس جو فور ات سو وات كونتري ون ذا فيري فيرست فيفا وورلد كاب 1930 واز ات برازيل فرانس يوروغواي اور سبين اوه ماي جاد اتس ذا فيرست وورلد كاب عادي عادي حتجي وحده اسهل يوروغواي بس كلوز نفس نفس الكونتيننت طيب ذا سكند كويشن هو في سكس كويشنز اوكي Uh, which country produces the most coffee in the world? There's Argentina, Brazil, China, and Nigeria. Nigeria, I would say... Maybe Brazil? Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. I, I only chose Brazil by elimination. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very smart way of doing it. Very smart way of doing it. Uh, okay, the third question: Which two countries share the longest international bo- border line? International border: Canada, USA, China, Russia, Pakistan, and India, Iran, and Iraq. You know the largest border between Baladin. Repeat them. Yeah, Canada and USA, mm-hmm. China mm-hmm. and Russia, mm-hmm. Pakistan and India, Iran and Iraq. China, Russia. Canada, USA. No way. <laughs> It's okay. the longest. Okay. <laughs> uh, based on our previous experiences, every time I ask the questions, guests tend to answer right. So let's see this time with you. Okay. So <laughs> the first question is, what is the smallest country in the world? So number one, Monaco. Two, San Marino. Three, Vatican City. And four, Liechtenstein. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I repeat that one more time. So number one, Monaco. Two, San Marino. Three, Vatican City. Four, Liechtenstein. Uh, I want to say the second one. San uh, Marino? Yeah. I lost it's, my streak. It's Vatican City. <laughs> it's Vatican. Seriously? Yeah. Tracy, <laughs> one of our guests literally had not come in home. That's <laughs> so funny. That's <laughs> no, no, it's fun. That's okay. I'm learning new things, Anna. <laughs> Fifth question. Mm. How many hearts... Does an octopus have I saw it. <laughs> one, zero, one, two, or three? I watched uh, octopus. The um, what was it? Octopus, my teacher. Oh, the, it's a documentary. A documentary, but I think they probably mentioned it there. One, two, three, or four? No, zero. Zero. Ah, no uh, zero, zero. Three. I shouldn't have said zero because the whole documentary was about how emotional they are. So oh. no. <laughs> And uh, the final question. How many eyes does a bee have? Zero, one, two, or five? So we have zero, one, two, or five. Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> Currently, you stand on one. One point. You can make it uh, oh three God. because we'll give you the six. <laughs> three. <laughs> three. It's not five. even an option. It's five. It's not an option. It's five. 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 Yeah. La, la, la. It's five. Yeah, yeah. Shit. She said five. <laughs> <laughs> But Tracy, to give you context, uh, they're ma- cool questions. Where do you get them from? They're j- online <laughs> <we> research. <laughs> But I know, uh, I know their facts. And if they, all of the guests, like really nafs and if it's interesting, if you, I like fa- it. Camera, I mean, I'm betting on the thing that's going to happen. So we're going to learn the right way to solve it. You shouldn't. They're actually interesting. It's it's nice to learn these things. Uh, thank you so much, Tracy. It was amazing having you on. Pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Uh, يعني عن جد I loved getting to know you more Same and here. hopefully uh, we have like a future encounters Thank as well. Thank you for nice having me. Nice to meet you, Tracy. Yeah, Thank that you, was our you first too. Listen, I'm gonna forget the name. With Tracy. With Tracy. Okay. Tell me what you want. I'm gonna always have. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but then on three, high take on life. Can you say higher take on like, life? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, where, do so I, where do we say it? We camera? say it here. Yeah, so always okay. have. I'm going to always have and do a higher take on life. Guys, always have a higher, higher take, take on, on life. life. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Tracy.